Hello everyone, in this video I will talk about drum triggers. First of all, we need to know what a drum trigger is. A drum trigger is an electronic transducer that can be attached to a drum, cymbal or any other percussion which allows the drummer to use acoustic drums with digital drum modules. As the name itself, trigger is triggered by vibrations on the drum heads, rims or on the cymbals. And these vibrations turn to electronic signals which can be modified later. It's commonly used on kicks, snare and sometimes on thumbs, but it's very rarely used on cymbals by drummers. Another important thing is these trigger signals almost always convert to the MIDI data. So we have to know what is MIDI. MIDI, Musical Instrument Digital Interface, is a technical standard developed in uh, the 80s which allows electronic instruments and other digital musical tools to communicate with each other. And it's a very small file size data, easy to modify with very wide choice of instrument sounds. So it's a tool which shows our acoustic instrument as an electronic instrument. After recorded with MIDI, you can change the pitch, duration, overall sound, velocity and a lot of parameters too. This is a very popular discussion among the musicians and listeners. Let's clarify that question. Are triggers cheating? Do they kill the soul of the music? And here are some examples about it. First of all, we can't just accept this technology and say this is so mechanical and this is cheating. I'm not going to use the triggers ever. As we know, uh, along with science, technology is evolving too. The world's music sounds uh, are evolving. New genres are uh, showing up, so the musicians are evolving with the effects of these. And nowadays, uh, for example, on metal music, drum triggering is becoming a thing that you can't avoid. But uh, there are a lot of types of usages of this technology. Let's hear a simple drumming with a trigger usage just on kick drums. Yes, it may sound really nice when you use it suitable, but sometimes it can be really irritating and annoying. For example, especially, it really bothers me when the trigger is used 100% excessively on the snare, except extreme metal. In my opinion, yes, it kills all the dynamics, tone, nuance uh, and the soul on it. I've played the same groove, quite a change on dynamics. They may be seen different visually, but they totally sound the same except hi-hat. Uh, and in my opinion, they both suck in terms of the sound. But I said 100%, which means you can use the triggered sound as a supporter. 
For example, you can fill the weak frequencies of the snare with another sampled snare. I know this whole tutorial series is about kick drums, but this is a very important knowledge to assimilate. So let me show you a clear example. What should have been is this. As we see and hear the most important tool on a drum kit, which is the snare, shouldn't be fully triggered uh, to have its own dynamics, your dynamics. And let's see the same example on kick drums now. In conclusion, using triggers are not cheating. The drummers who are playing extreme fast may be hit very soft and without dynamics, but remember that they are still hitting every single note. This is another thing, it's a matter of taste. And it's not easy as it looks. But yes, sometimes triggers can be really frustrating and kill the soul of the music when they are not used properly and when they used unnecessary. I just use the drum triggers on kick drums and on recordings I sometimes get a little triggered support for the snare and thumbs for better tone but I of course uh, always prefer an organic snare and thumb sound on recordings and live shows too but it may be quite hard to always get these tones. By the way of course I prefer an organic kick sound too but it takes too much time and effort to have it on in terms of recording. For example, to record the kit which I'm playing now, I might need three types of microphones in different places. One inside, one outside, uh, one near the pedal or one inside, two outside, etc. for each kick. So it means I might need six high-end microphones and to record these signals I need three six channels, six uh, high-end preamps, six free ADDA high-end converters, uh, and these are just to record and in the mixing uh, signals might have phase problems. I have to check all the kick signals one by one if they have um, phase problems or not. So this process is very inconvenient. Nowadays nearly none of the modern metal bands in the world are trying to record the kicks without triggers. And if you are playing extreme metal you don't have any chance not to use drum triggers. When you play a blast beat on uh, 270 BPM, they can't be heard piece by piece in the mix without triggers. You can see uh, the biggest advantage of using triggers on live shows. As all we know, every room, bar, concert, place sounds different. Um, Quality of PA systems may not satisfy you. The quality and quantity of drums and microphones may not be enough if you're not bringing your own ones. And uh, if you don't have your own tone master, most of the time, he or she will fail in drum sounding, especially on thumbs and kicks. If you are playing on a festival, you will not have enough time to uh, have the perfect sound unless uh, if you're not playing with a uh, dream theater or slayer uh, so with your triggers and 
your trigger module, you can have your own studio quality sound drums with you uh, in the concerts. Let's continue talking about the usages of triggers on live shows. The biggest disadvantage of using triggers uh, on live shows is the dynamic range, which means your uh, nuance will not be transferred to the audience in a 100% health. Yes, the trigger models uh, have their own sensitivity for this, but it will definitely not sound like an original mic tone if you are playing in a rock uh, metal band, it's uh, small details. A good module's own sensitivity of dynamic range is almost always okay for thumps, percussions and kicks. But again, mentioning this, if you are not playing a 250 BPM blast beat with your band, please do not use triggers on the snare. Now let's discuss about the usage types of triggers. As I mentioned and gave examples previously, triggers can be used as a sound support. And now let's hear the same played partition with full sampling with and without sensitivity options. As we know, we can add any sample to these MIDI signals, so now let's add and hear the same plate partition with some sounds not related with drums. Yes, it sounds useless and stupid, but it was just an example to show you that you're able to put any sound on any MIDI signal. This is a very strange mixing technique to avoid bleeding while recording. Bleeding means, for example, when you're recording the snare with the snare mic, uh, tom source cymbals frequencies may enter this mic. I have learned this technique from uh, Glenn Fricker, who hates any trigger sampling. He's explaining the technique precisely in his own video, so there's no point to explain it again here. You can click the link in the description and uh, watch his video. Lastly, I want to talk about the placement of a trigger on the kick. I usually put the triggers downside, near the pedals. That's because sometimes when you hit hard to snare, the trigger may catch these sound vibrations and act like that you hit the kick pedal, if it's too close to the trigger. These were the main topics which I wanted to mention about triggers. Of course, uh, there are much more things to talk, discuss about this, but in general I thought that uh, I described the drum triggers and usages of them properly. Uh, this is something uh, evolving so fast, so feel free to ask questions and share your opinions and knowledge uh, in the comment section. So, see you in the next video, which will be about swivel technique.